Hello boys and girls, welcome to church. This week, we continue our teaching on the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were ten simple rules that God gave his people, the Israelites, after he rescued them from slavery in the land of Egypt and they escaped through the Red Sea. These rules are the foundation for living a good life. They teach us the difference between right and wrong and can be found in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 to 21. Today, we will take a look at rule number six. But first, let us pray. Eyes closed, head bowed. In Jesus' name, amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you so much for another opportunity to learn at your feet. We thank you, Father Lord, for all that you have been teaching us in this series on the Ten Commandments. Lord, we ask that today you will teach us something new once again, something to help us in our journey on this earth. And we pray that at the end of it all, all the glory will be to you and to you alone. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.
to see you again and to worship with you. Today we are singing a very simple song. It says, God of wonders beyond the galaxy. Are you ready to give God praise? Come on, let me hear you shout. Woo! Now put your hands together for him like this. Come on. Woo, 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 woo.
turn there are rules board games have rules video games have rules playground have rules there are school rules traffic rules estate rules covid rules rules on the school bus your country also has rules and parents yes have rules parents probably have the most rules of anybody and they are constantly making new ones everything from make your bed in the morning, to do your chores, to no video games or TV on school nights. All these rules have different purposes. School rules keep order so that everyone can learn. Traffic rules help to keep order on the roads and avoid accidents. Playground rules help to ensure everyone plays safe and fair. Guess what? God also has rules. God gave his people 10 rules that will help them know the difference between right and wrong. Last week was all about rule number five. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40, someone asked Jesus, which is the most important commandment out of all the 10 commandments? And Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and most important command, and we must always remember it. And the second command is just like the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The first four commandments of the Ten Commandments, they cover what Jesus says is the greatest commandment, loving God. We've learned to put God first, to make no other gods beside him, to guard his name, and to honor the Sabbath day. The last six commandments relate to the second commandment of Jesus. Remember, two commandments, to love other people. God wants us to love our friends, our neighbors, our classmates. He wants us to love everyone we meet, from the beggar on the street, to the bully who pushes you around on the playground. They are all God's children, and he wants us to love every one of them. God has taxed us with this command, honor your father and mother. Honor means to respect or treat someone as special or important. God wants us to respect and treat our parents as special and important. Honoring our parents is so important that the famous Apostle Paul wrote about this command in his letters in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 3. He said, children, obey your parents the way the Lord wants. This is the right thing to do. The command says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. The promise is, then everything will be well with you and you will have a long life on the earth. We can honor God by honoring them, listening to what our parents have to say. Parents are not perfect. Parents make mistakes the same way kids do. And that can be very, very frustrating. Parents forget promises. 
they change their minds, they misunderstand situations and can end up blaming the wrong kid. Tell me about that. They don't always listen and they don't always understand. Parents are imperfect, just like children, and they let us down in many ways. But all this does not make them bad parents. Mom and dad are doing the best they can to love God and others, just like we are doing and learning in this series. They have a tough job and they deserve our respect and our love. We can honor our parents by being good listeners and being obedient. We can honor them by keeping the house rules, whether they're watching or not, by doing our chores and other duties around the house without being told. We can also honor them by telling them that we appreciate them. We can write notes, give hugs, and simply say, I love you, mom, or I love you, dad. Saying thank you when they help you out with your homework or when they buy you a gift on your birthday, honors them. Parents have a tough job, very, very tough job. And God is counting on the parents to raise their children right. So let's honor God by honoring our parents. Do it today, do it every day. Now, if you would like to catch the full lesson from last week, all the other lessons in this series, please check our YouTube page at Elevation NG and search for seeds. You will be glad you did. Our verse of the month is from the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect. It gives us new strength. The laws of the Lord can be trusted. They make childish people wise. This simply means that the commandments, the rules, the instructions that God gives us are cool, super, awesome, and will guide us. They are the very best. And we can trust whatever instruction God gives us because the rules make childish people wise and gives new strength. Now let's say this memory verse in a fun way. I will say one word and you say the next till we are done and then we switch places i will start first ready set let's go the of lord perfect gives new the of Lord, be they childish, wise. Now let's switch places. You go first. Ready, set, go. Law, the is it us strength laws the can trusted make people great job guys you can practice saying the memory verse this way with your brother sister mom dad aunt uncle cousin or grandparents. There's one commandment that a lot of people overlook more than any of the other commandments listed in Exodus chapter 20. People don't pay attention to it because out of all the commandments, it's the only commandment that no one thinks they will ever break. It's a pretty big commandment. Now I have to warn you ahead. It's a pretty big commandment. And I think we can all agree that it's a good one. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 13, God said, do not murder. Has anyone in here murdered anyone in the last week? Anyone? In case you don't understand me, I just asked if anyone watching has killed another person before maybe a long time ago 
last week, many, many years ago, yesterday, how about you? Have any of you kids ever murdered someone? Ever? How about the adults? Can I get a witness? How many of you have ever murdered anyone? Well, nobody's ever murdered anyone. So, I guess we're done for the day. Let's wrap it up. We're all good, right? Not so fast. There's a little more to this commandment than ending someone's life. Taking a life is not only against God's commandment. It's against the law. But this commandment is about more than committing murder or killing someone. It's about hatred. Hatred is one of the main motives for murder. Bitterness, anger, jealousy, all of these emotions lead to hateful thoughts and sometimes violent actions. Now, tell me, has anyone in this room felt any of those emotions before? No one in this room has ever committed a murder, but who here today can say they never said a word in anger or swung a fist in anger? The story of the first murder in the Bible shows us that the sixth commandment is about more than taking a life. Let's see what cost a man named Cain to take the life of his own brother. In the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verses 2 to 16, Eve, Adam's wife, gave birth to two sons, Cain and Abel. Abel took care of sheep. We can say he was a shepherd. And Cain took care of the ground. He became a farmer. Later, Cain brought a gift to God. He brought some food from the farm. Abel also brought the best parts of his sheep, the very fat ones. God accepted Abel and his gift, but God did not accept Cain and his gift. So Cain became very angry and he looked unhappy. God asked Cain, why are you angry? Why do you look so unhappy? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is ready to attack you. Sin wants you, but you must rule over it. Sometime later, Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out into the field. So Cain and Abel went into the field. Then Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. After that time, God said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? Cain answered, I don't know. Is it my job to take care of my brother? Then the Lord said, what have you done? Your brother's blood is on the ground. That blood is like a voice that tells me what happened. And now you will be cursed in your walk with the ground. It is the same ground where your brother's blood fell. Your hands killed him. You will walk the ground, but it will not grow good crops for you anymore. You will wander around on the earth. Then Cain said to the Lord, This punishment is more than I can take. Look, you have forced me to stop walking the ground. And now I must hide from you. I will wander around on the earth and anyone who meets me can kill me. Then the Lord said to Cain, No, if anyone kills you, I will punish that person seven times more. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain. It was a warning to anyone 
who met him, not to kill him. Abel was a man who loved God and followed God's command. He did everything right. He did nothing wrong to his brother and he had done nothing to deserve the anger that led to his death. But Cain became jealous when he thought that God loved his brother more than him. God didn't love Abel any more than Cain. God loved them both, but he had given them instructions on how they should show their love and devotion to God. It was Cain who chose to do things his way and not God's way. Cain's bitterness, anger, and jealousy led to hate, and that hate led to murder. Cain's story shows us that God wants us to turn away from hatefulness, even more than violence. Jesus tells us in the Gospels, that is in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that anyone who commits an act of hatred is just as guilty of breaking his commandment of someone who takes a life. So, if you hate someone, you have killed someone. The Bible says you must not murder anyone. Anyone who murders another will be judged. But I tell you, if you are angry with your brother, you will be judged. If you say bad things to your brother, you will be judged. And if you call your brother a fool, then you will be in danger of the fire of hell. That's what the Bible says. If we want to stay right with God, we will not let anger, bitterness, jealousy, and other negative emotions get the best of us. We will reject hate, and we will choose to love everyone, even those who are not so loving to us. When we read the words of Jesus, we discover that the sixth commandment is a lot harder to follow than we thought. In fact, it may be one of the toughest commandments to keep. We all get to feel negative emotions on a daily basis. When we are treated unfairly, when someone else gets something we wanted, when we are left out, when we are treated hatefully, we all want to respond with hatefulness. We want to lash out, we want to hurt someone. Here is how you can overcome these hateful desires by remembering that every person, every life is special to God. Can we say that together? By remembering that everyone, every life is special to God. Just as you were formed in your mother's womb by your creator, every person you will ever meet was formed in the same way. From classroom bullies to crooked politicians to evil dictators, every man, woman, and child who ever lived was created by God. We are all sinful and we all do things out of hatred and anger. We are also loved by God so much that he sent his only son to die for us on the cross. God loves everyone and he gave us his commandments so that we would learn to love others the same way he loves us. I know it's not easy to love someone who is mean. I know it's hard to be nice to the person who once bullied you. I know it can be tough to swallow your pride when you feel bitter and jealous, but hatred is never the answer. Love is what God showed us on the cross. Love is what we need to spread to the world. The sixth commandment says, do not murder. It also means do not hate. Choose love instead of hate. Choose love instead of bitterness. Choose love instead of jealousy. Ask God to give you a heart that can love even the most difficult people. You can choose love over hate. God will show you the way. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for helping us understand the sixth commandment better. 
help us to show love to everyone we meet. Forgive us for acting hatefully. Show us how to do good, especially to those who have not been nice to us. Help us to always choose love instead of hate and jealousy. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God has given us many things that can be used for good or evil. And he has given us his commandments to help us make the right choices. We can use words or our hands or even a rock to hurt someone. Or we can use what God has given us to lay strong foundations, to build lasting relationships and connections, and to love other people. God said, do not kill. Jesus said, love others and do not spread hatred. Let's choose love over hate and be a force for good and for God. God created every life and every life is precious to him. We should treat each other as precious. Now we have learned six commandments. Do you remember them? Here you go. First commandment, no other gods. Second commandment, no idols. Third commandment, respect God's name. Fourth commandment, keep the Sabbath day holy. Fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Sixth commandment, do not murder. Make sure you learn these commandments by heart and choose love always. Bye for now. Here is the pop quiz for this week. What is the sixth commandment? The sixth commandment is do not murder. As long as we don't actually kill someone, we haven't broken the sixth commandment. True or false? False. Who was killed in today's story? Abel. Why did Cain kill his brother? Because Cain was jealous and thought that God loved his brother more than him. We need to answer hateful people with hateful actions of our own. True or false? False. Whose gift did God accept? God accepted Abel's gifts. Why did God refuse Cain's gift? Cain did not do what was right. Anyone who murders another will be judged. True or false? True. What does do not murder also mean? It also means 
do not hate. How can we overcome hateful desires? By remembering that every person is special to God.